Recently, a friend and fellow YouTuber, C.M. Coleman, asked me if I had any videos that would work for someone who lived in an apartment. I also noticed from one of his videos that he has a patio garden. So I wanted to show you a quick, easy way to build a worm tower that can be used on a patio garden. And as a bonus, this thing can be moved from plant to plant. Stay tuned. Welcome back subscribers. If you haven't joined us yet, you can do so by clicking on the green shorts icon that's gonna appear in the bottom right hand corner of the screen throughout the video. Now normally a worm tower is gonna look like this, or actually like this, where the bottom section is perforated. It's buried into the garden to this point, and then the worms migrate in and out of the compostables, depositing their castings in the soil. You're also pouring water through it um, and that water is filtering out through the preparations into the garden through the pathways that the worms have created. It's a nice symbiotic tool for a garden. But you may not have a garden. You may have to grow vegetables or plants on a patio in pots. So what do you do in that case? You can't dig a hole this big in that pot and stick a worm tower in there. So I've got a solution for that problem. We're gonna reduce the size of that just a little bit from a four inch pipe to a three inch pipe. And we're going to put a coupling on the bottom of that that we're gonna perforate. So the water will be able to flow out the bottom of the worm tower um, into our pots and, uh, and the worms are gonna stay basically inside the tube. But because we wanna be able to move this from plant to plant, we're going to give it some spikes by way of six inch carriage bolts to form legs that come out of the bottom. So we can basically spike this thing into a plant, pour the water through it, let those nutrients flow out. And then after a couple days there, we'll move it to another plant. So we can sort of spread the love, spread the nutrients around our patio garden and have the benefits of being able to do worm composting on a small scale. To make this project, you'll need a five by five inch piece of screen a 3 inch PVC coupling and 3 inch PVC clean out coupling with screw cap. 3 quarter inch carriage bolts 6 inches long with flat washers and nuts and a 2 foot length of 3 inch PVC pipe. And the tools for the job. A drill with a quarter inch bit, pliers, scissors, a clamp, and a handsaw. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a 1 inch ring off the bottom of this 2 foot pipe and that's going to be used for the lid. So let's do that real quick. I'm going to clamp this down. I'm going to cut this halfway through and then spin it around. Don't want to let the saw hit the clamp there. I'm going to loosen this a bit. I'm going to take care to keep my PVC scraps as contained as possible they actually need to go in the trash. They cannot be recycled. Just gonna line this up as best I can. So there's our one inch ring. Knock these burrs off. Next, we'll use our quarter inch drill bit to perforate our clean out cap. To do that, I'm gonna thread it into the base until it's snug. And then drill. I'm gonna stay away from the edge a little bit here because I remember I've got threads underneath, so keep that in mind. The goal here is maximum perforation while not destroying the structural integrity of the cap. So I'm gonna do holes in here as well. I'm also gonna perforate here. Holding the drill bit by hand, I'll clean out the burrs. Once we've got this cleaned up, 
I'm gonna take it out and we'll install the spikes. Clean up the inside a little bit here. Pretty good perforation. Now basically what I'm gonna do with these six inch carriage bolts is feed them through like this. Although I need to do it in a place that it's gonna be away from this area so that I can bolt it down. So we'll choose one of the holes that's near the edge, feed the bolt through, slide a washer on, and then spin the nut down here. I'm gonna just use our pliers here just to snug that down. I don't want to have the carriage bolts too close to the edge so that they affect the threads. So let me just make sure that fits. Okay. It still spins, so we're safe to use a hole that catches the edge like that. We wouldn't want it much more beyond that point, though. So I'll find another hole that's about a third of the way around near the edge and repeat. And the last, it's about one third. Now once we've got our three spikes in, we can thread this back in to the fitting. And this time we're gonna go a little more snug with it and lock it in. Now we can kind of squeeze those things down and get them uh, to where they're perpendicular. All right, now that our base is set up, let's work on the lid. The reason we're adding a screened lid to this is because all of my worm composters have also attracted soldier fly larvae. Soldier fly larvae are actually amazing composters, but we don't want them to mix with our worms. They'll coexist, but in my experience, I never see worm cocoons in a composter that has worms and soldier fly larvae. So the soldier fly larvae will not eat the worms, but I think they're eating the cocoons. So they would inhibit the growth of the colony. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a coupling. I've got a piece of scrap screen here that is just big enough. The ring will go on top there and then we're gonna push it down and lock that screen in place. But before I do that, I'm gonna trim around the edge here so that when it's locked in, we don't see any of the screen sticking out. Now this is trimmed, I'm just gonna push this down in. Actually, what you wanna do is use your nice finished edge up so that the cut edge, which is gonna be a little more junky, face down. I'm gonna start this out pressing in by hand and then I'll finish it up with the hammer. All right, so we have a nice recessed screen cap for our worm tower. This is gonna allow air to move in and out, as well as allowing us to pour water down through this worm tower to spread those nutrients out to the plants. Now that our parts are complete, let's assemble our worm tower. So I'm gonna put my cut end into the bottom here. Snug this up. Now, I really don't think this needs glue. It's gonna be a tight enough joint, uh, and if you ever wanna disassemble this and clean it or replace a certain part, it's nice to have the option to take it apart. Of course, we have our lid. Now, with this type of fitting, um, this is gonna be a pretty tight fit. So you really just kinda of wanna stick it on the top nice and easy so that you don't have to work too hard to get it off. You could actually sand this down a little bit to reduce the diameter to make it a little more of a loose fit. Or you just kind of stick it on there gently, that's fine too. All right, now that our patio garden worm tower is complete, let's go find a plant to install it in and put in some worms. What I'm gonna do is I've got a spot here where one of my plants has actually died back a little bit. 
can clear this area out and make room for the composter. With the worm tower in place, let's add worms. First, a little bedding of shredded paper, which will moisten with rainwater. Followed by some kitchen scraps. Then, about 150 red wiggler composting worms. See the description with a link to where I get them. And I'm also gonna add a little grit. I've got some sand. Uh, grit helps the worms process. I'm gonna sprinkle a little grit in there. And we'll top it off with a little more shredded paper and rainwater to moisten. One note, prolonged exposure to direct sunlight can cause the internal temperature of the worm tower to be too hot, causing the worms to move out or die. See the notes in the description for a few simple ways to manage heat. Well, there you have it, the movable patio garden worm tower. Please let us know in the comments below if you've had success using this design, especially you, Mr. Coleman. As always, our mission here at Green Shorts is to help you see green so you can be green and save a little green by doing it yourself. Please like and share and subscribe for new DIY videos every Friday.